We're continuing with this painting here of the lion and the soldier, depicting an allegorical interpretation of God fighting our battles. We have the lion in front, the soldier behind. The soldier has confidence because Jesus is fighting his battles, and the lion is symbolic of Jesus, who goes ahead of us. In fact, that's what I want to call this painting. He goes ahead of us. And in my last video, I did a kind of monochromatic glaze over everything to set up the value structure. Had the sketch underneath, used matte medium, a large amount of that mixed with a little bit of raw umber dark and ultramarine blue and kind of created a gray glaze. And then I blocked in the tonal value structure throughout the image. And that's what we have here, just uh, showing the lights and the darks. And now in this video, what I want to do is follow up with some color. And we're going to use that same glazing technique for the process. So for that, I'm going to take a flat brush, uh, 5 eighths, and we're going to dip into our matte medium. We're going to take a little bit of organic orange. And that's a nice kind of red-orange color. You just need a little bit of it. It goes a long way. And then we swirl the pigment into the matte medium. You see how that looks. And again, it creates a nice translucent glaze. It looks milky white, this matte medium, when it's wet. But it dries crystal clear. It allows us to get a lot of vibrancy, depth, and blending. Now, what we want to do then is apply this onto uh, the fiery areas and it's going to re really make a nice vibrant fire when everything's done. So much more vibrant than just mixing titanium white and yellow and adding it to your canvas. A lot of times when I see paintings, they lack that vibrancy, but this will, will really create that. So uh, we start by putting in the glaze kind of around the edges. Okay, so right in the middle of the flames, you're not gonna be able to get luminosity unless we first establish some of the darks. So we put glaze right here in these little openings in the flame. You might be able to see it now as I move to the other camera. And then we also set this down over the edges by wherever we have some contrast between the tonal values. So we're going to put some of that into here. We're looking for any other areas, maybe here on the underside of the lion. Now we're going to add this to more places than just the fire, but any place where we have some warmer values, that'll be a good opportunity to uh, incorporate this color. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so you can see more of what's going on. We're going to add this also to the top. Now, here we have the flame. Yeah, let's let's actually pull this in slightly into the interior because we'll be following up with yellows on top, and it's going to really pop once we have enough layers on here. But for now, I just need to set the stage. So I'm actually going to kind of build out some of the uh, structure of the flames. Okay, we'll put in a little bit of this organic orange right here. Uh, we'll follow up with some here. Now I'm looking at my reference photo, seeing exactly where to plot out these values. I'm not just putting it anywhere I want. Really taking a look at what the differences in tonal value and color are in this reference photo. And then I'm placing it in the appropriate spots. So we put in a little bit right here, and then um, a little bit there. You might wonder, well, how do I paint a fire that looks like a fire? It's not really a trick to doing it. It's just observing your reference photo and painting what you see. I mean, there are some little ideas I'll share with you along the way and things that can help, but there's no substitution for observing your reference photo and really looking at it, looking
looking at your canvas, looking at it, looking at your canvas, making sure that you're faithfully reproducing what you see as much as possible. Now I'm letting the amount of paint on the brush kind of exhaust. See, there's only a little bit of the glaze left on there, and that allows me to kind of dry brush as the tip of the brush has less that matte medium paint mixture on it. With that, then I can create some shading because I'm just lightly touching the canvas and now the glaze application is not quite as strong as some of the other areas. This is how you build up shading with acrylic. I'm not saying it's the only way you build it up, but it's one of the best ways I've found because acrylic dries so fast and it can be very difficult to blend, but this is a great way to do it. Now, Working in the top part, and now let's get this area here. So we're going to go over this lighter section. We're going to add that organic orange to that. And you have to keep in mind, this is all a process. So it's going to eventually get the yellows in there too, but that'll be for another video, maybe another day too. I don't know. But we're going to um, just put this color in and keep things simple right now. Now we do want to get some of this... Uh, warm color into the background because as we look at a reference photo uh, we can see let me just show you here as I move this camera over you can see some of those warm colors up into that section as well all right so that's just the effect of the fire you know in that forest and we want to make sure we're capturing that so that's why I'm adding it here as well now I better brush this out because it does set up pretty quickly i want to make sure i'm getting this incorporated i could probably use a slightly larger brush but this can still work just got to keep the paint moving and we'll brush up brush up and we don't want to bring it all the way up into the trees because there the color gets a little bit cooler in tone it kind of fades out so we'll just Leave off right there. Now we can bring this glaze all the way over here behind the soldier slightly. And if you paint over, it's okay because I'll be, you know, I got some of the glaze on him, but you can't be afraid of that. You just have to allow the glaze to get a little messy in these beginning stages and realize that you can always paint over on top of it because we'll be using more opaque paint for uh, the soldier and the lion and the details definitely get more opaque we use the glazes just to kind of set everything up and do the underpainting and um, get the value structure locked in without committing um, to really really dark or strong applications of paint now let's also work on this lower portion as well we've got the flames down below and i'll just zoom out a little bit so you can see that and here again, we want to add some of these reddish hues kind of around the edges of the fire. Okay, and again, I'm looking at my reference photo, seeing where the best place is to put it. I don't, I don't want to keep everything too rigid. I want to have some areas that have more of a glaze and, you know, we have some areas that have a thick application, some that are thin. So in other words, I don't want to just have a, you know, following the flame all the way around in a regular pattern. I want to see what's in the reference photo and have some areas where it's lighter towards the tip of the flames and some areas where it's uh, kind of, you know, lighter in the center. All right, so that's good. And now I, I don't want to miss that area up here see it in this camera shot and for this one i think i'm mostly just gonna just gonna glaze that one in uh with with the red all the way just gonna keep that one a little bit darker in general that'll push it back into the distance help it to recede Get a little bit of that glaze going up into the trees ever so slightly and kind of fade it out using brush strokes and various patterns Just make sure I have enough of it down here on the bottom. There. Now, 
I'm trying to think, should I put any of it into the lion? I might just put a little bit in just so that we have some color harmony. Although truly I don't see a lot of this kind of color in the lion, but uh, yeah, maybe if I optically mix it in with some yellow, it can work out. So I, I'll add just a little bit of it to a few areas, you know, mostly on the edges of the highlights. You know, like right here where we're turning the form and we're uh, going into some of those highlighted areas, I'll add a little bit there. Some into the mouth. Again, I just, I like to get that color unity by making sure that we don't have, you know, the instance of the color only occurring in one area. So I'm spreading it around and just kind of getting this color in a few different spots. The nose obviously can have more of that reddish hue. Okay. Maybe a little bit here on this, uh, on the coat. And then we also can put it into the fur here, which is gonna have more of a brownish color and this will Will harmonize with that we have subsequent layers going on top don't want to put it on this part which is going to be cooler in tone so we'll just kind of create a distinction with that i want maybe some of it on the face there's a couple parts that are cooler i'll leave that this part here has got a little more of that warmth. Just basically three colors at this point in the image. Put a little bit here on the man's face. Um, that probably just about does it here for the image. Put a little bit on the hand and so forth. And then I'll also put a little bit on the foreground. So we have kind of a sense of some of the warm color from the fire affecting that area. Okay. So that's what we have set up already. Now doesn't seem like like a lot this color we added but it actually does quite a bit and in person it's more vibrant and i can really see where i'm going with the painting because now what i've got is i've got uh, a cool tint and a warm tint working together and i'm also at the same time developing the value structure and this is really going to help me a lot in this process so the next steps then will be to add some darker tonal values because now we have a mid-tone and a highlight Got to work in some of the darker values so we basically have then three values to work out of but we're hitting value and color simultaneously with this process again using the acrylic glazing technique where we mix in a little bit of pigment and a lot of matte medium it's a lot of fun it, it, it is challenging because um, initially you'll probably use too much paint and you'll have some difficulty getting the glaze to apply smoothly but if you go a lot lighter than what you think meaning a lot less paint, a lot more medium. Um, you'll find it a lot easier to apply, and uh, it's it's a lot of fun. So we're going to continue to develop this painting translucently with the glazing technique. I'll be showing you more aspects of this process, and uh, look forward to sharing it with you. Hey, if you enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up, like, subscribe. That helps this channel be, be seen by more people. Share it with your friends. And uh, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of this video and how it will help you in your painting. All right. Well, thank you so much for watching today. God bless you. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care.